Hi there. This video is part of a series that is following my journey to getting published in 2020. Today's topic is submissions. I'm going to talk to you about how to get started with the submissions process and I will include some tips and resources which you may find useful. I will give you a quick update on how I got on with my Instagram post to entice publishers my way, which I talked about in my last video. And finally, I will also give you the top tips I took from a seminar I attended on getting your book published and from the research I have done online since. Hopefully, some of the things I cover here might help you also, wherever you are in your creative journey. Hi there, I go by the name The Celtic Storyteller. I'm an unpublished writer who's determined to get published this year. I will guarantee this happens by self-publishing a book I am currently working on. I am also going to continue to make submissions for a book that I finished in 2018. If you want to know more about me and why I decided to share this journey online, I cover all of that in my introduction video. I'm learning as I go along and I'm happy to share what I find along the way with you. I have a lot of information to share with you today, so let's jump right in. Here are three tips to getting started with the submission process. My first tip is know the genre your book falls into. The reason for this is that all publishers will include on their submissions page the genres they're accepting submissions for. They may also specify the range of genres they will not accept submissions for. So knowing your genre allows you to quickly determine if the publisher is right for your book. Submissions information can be found on most publishers' websites. This is the submission section on the Penguin Ireland website. They say they are accepting all genres. However, read a little more and you will see that they have an exclusion list. This is the website for Lilliput Press and again, they have a genre guideline and an exclusion list. This leads me on to my second tip, which is to create a list of all the publishers and agents you are interested in and record what genres they are currently accepting submissions for. It will be easier if you record this all in one place, but you don't need to do this all at once. This way, any time spent researching publishers isn't wasted. Just record what you find whenever you get the time to work on your submissions research. I usually keep an eye on publishers' websites while I'm still writing. Here's what I'm doing, and the URLs for these websites will be in the description box below. Writing.ie is the website where I found the most comprehensive list of Irish publishers. With a quick Google search, I'm sure you can find something similar local to you. I found this information on Strauss Consultants' website particularly interesting. The Big Five publishers may not take unsolicited submissions, but their imprints do. This could be a way to get in the back door of one of the Big Five publishers and benefit from all their experience. There is similar information on Authors Publish website, so it is worth doing a search for something similar, as the lists on both of these websites were not exactly the same. And this picture on Tor's website clearly shows the different publishers and imprints which are owned or partnered with the Big Five. It also makes sense to research local agents and book competitions, but this will be specific to where you are in the world and just requires internet searches for book competitions or literary agents or publishers. This is the Irish Writers' Centre website, which is a fantastic resource for writers. And this is where I attended a seminar on getting your book published a number of years ago. Their website contains lots of useful information on submissions and writers' competitions, so it's well worth a look. Lastly, when you are ready to submit your manuscript, follow the submission instructions on the publisher's website to the letter. Here is an example of Penguin Ireland's submission page. Submissions will usually require the same things like a cover letter, a short synopsis of the book, and the work itself. Any cover letter will need to include a short intro, a short spiel about your book and who it would interest, and a short author bio. Penguin Ireland ask for a 500 word synopsis and the whole manuscript, but each publisher's requirements can differ. For instance, some publishers ask for a shorter synopsis and only three chapters of the manuscript. My tip for you here would be to keep your submissions in mind while you're writing. So when you are hitting the main plot points in your writing, note it down somewhere. I do this in Scrivener. Your synopsis will ask for the plot of your whole book, including your ending. It can be challenging to summarise over 100,000 words in 500 words, 
So having some ideas jotted down beforehand will certainly help you when you get to this stage. There are some really great resources online to help you with writing a cover letter or a novel synopsis. One of the websites I found really useful was this one, the Manuscript Appraisal Agency. Kit Casteris has an article on both writing a cover letter and writing a synopsis. I liked her tips and advice and her articles are worth a look. Now, before I get into the top 10 tips for getting your book published, here's a really quick update on what happened after I posted on Instagram to entice publishers my way. Here is the Instagram post with the at mentions and tags. I haven't heard a peep out of the publishers I tagged, but look, I can't say I'm surprised and it was definitely worth the try if only to toughen myself up. A number of years ago, I attended a seminar in the Irish Writers' Centre on getting your book published and I have also spent many hours online researching the submissions process and how to get published. So here are the top 10 tips taken from these sources. Some of these are tips on submissions and some of these are tips on writing. So let's get going. Firstly, and most importantly, so I've actually already told you some of this already. Number one, follow the submission instructions to the letter. Do not risk giving the publishers an excuse to bin your submission before they even read it. My biggest take from the seminar, and this is my personal opinion, was that publishers were not only picky about what genres they would take submissions for, that they would, without a second thought, dismiss any submission that did not follow their instructions to the letter. Number two, tips for what actually goes into your submission. Your cover letter is the pitch to the publisher. So think about the blurb on the back of books to get the feel for how you should describe your book. Don't be overly friendly. Be concise, let your idea and your writing speak for itself. Do not compare yourself to other writers. Your synopsis should contain the full story. So don't leave out the exciting bits or the bit at the end so you don't spoil the story. They actually need to see all of that. The chapters or book you submit should be as well edited as you can manage. If you can afford it, you could consider having it edited professionally before submission. If you are submitting the first three chapters, make sure the plot and pace is carried well throughout them. Number three, it's not a deal breaker, but it helps if you have an online profile. This tip comes directly from the seminar I attended a number of years ago. However, I'm not sure it stands the test of time. I think an online presence is almost a necessity now, and it is one of the reasons I'm talking to you now on YouTube. For some really up-to-date information on this topic, I would highly recommend checking out the writer Helen Redfern's YouTube channel. You will find some really fantastic content on writing, planning and creativity. And she has recently uploaded two really great and thought-provoking videos on this very topic. Number four, you may have a better chance at getting published if you find an agent. Number five, keep your communications with the publishers professional. They want to know you are someone they can have a respectful working relationship with. Number six, some publishers will expect you to have done your research about them. So when submitting, address it to the person you have found deals with books in your genre, not to the company as a whole. So not to, to whom it may concern. And the last four tips are all about writing. Number seven, keep writing after you have submitted. Number eight, write for yourself, not for others. Write what you feel passionate about and no writing is wasted. Number nine, when writing dialogue, speak it out loud and see how it sounds. Number 10, avoid the pitfall of writing too much backstory. Let the story unfold on the page so the reader can witness it. I'll be honest, I left the seminar and getting your book published thinking my book would never see the light of day. I felt the publishers were only accepting submissions in genres they thought would sell and I wasn't writing a book in a popular genre so I was feeling a bit deflated. However, I have since realised I need to cast the net wide when looking for publishers. I also believe that search tip I gave you about the inference is great because it opens up a door to getting published for what you might call the lesser trending genres so all hope is not lost. Thank you so much for listening and if following my journey is something that would interest you I would love if you went ahead and hit the subscribe button below and a big thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my channel already.
I'm going to leave it there for today. In the next video in this series, I will let you know how I'm getting on with my writing, submissions and my self-publishing research. If you have any kind of creative project on the go, this may be helpful for you as well. So you're welcome to pop by for the next video and see what you can take from it. Keep up all the good work on your own project and I'm going to continue to submerge myself in my writing too. That's all I have for today's video. Sloan Capole, which is bye for now in Irish, and wishing you all the best.